It's up to us all to understand that they've got to have space somehow. They've got to have space. They cannot survive and be the same animal they are now if they're just in captivity. When pups are born at the Tallahassee Museum, the goal isn't to keep all of them captive. But you can't just put a captive-born wolf in the wild. We've got this captive population, and we'd like to try to introduce some to the wild. But they don't know anything about living in the wild. They've been fed all their lives. They lived in captivity. And they were taking captive bred wolves and putting them together on these islands, like here at St. Vincent's Island, about 100 miles from here. We're going to the island with Robin and Mike Rogoff, two longtime volunteers and friends of the refuge. In her years of volunteering, Robin has become well acquainted with the island's red wolves. What the U.S. Fish and Wildlife has done is they've carefully selected a male and a female pair of red wolves based on their genetics because they want to diversify that gene pool. They introduce them here. This is big enough habitat to support one wolf family. When I teach, especially children, I always bring a whelk shell. And even if I don't have a map of the island, I can talk about the shape of the island by holding up a whelk because it's shaped like a whelk. Here's the fat end and here's the skinny end. And there are a lot of whelk shells out here. We're gonna go out onto the beach and come down to this very interesting area that a lot of people don't know about. Oyster Pond Outlet and Rattlesnake Slough. Oyster Pond shows us what makes this particular island ideal for red wolves. The unique thing about St. Vincent Island, especially in this area, but also for the whole Gulf Coast, is we have five freshwater lakes. All we are on St. Vincent is a succession of dune ridges and swales between the dune ridges. And the swales between the dune ridges are what collect the freshwater, and that's where you'll find the freshwater lakes. But for the red wolves, for sure, they're mammals. They're gonna have just like the needs that we need, fresh water, shelter, cover, food sources, which that means their food sources normally require fresh water. It's also suitable because in a relatively small piece of land, 12,000 acres, surrounded by salt water, you've got a diversity of habitats here. So you've got different kinds of vegetation, different kinds of animals, and, s and a small distance here. When the river brought the sand from Appalachian Highlands, the wind and tides together made a brand new island. The seeds took hold, the green plants grew, and butterflies came when the flowers bloomed. Let's keep St. Vincent Island green and free, where wild things live in harmony. St. Vincent Island has everything red wolves need to thrive. But are they equipped to survive when nature gets dangerous? Here in the island's highest ridge, Robin remembers the wolves' most harrowing moment. My experience with Hurricane Dennis, based on what the pine trees looked like on the beachfront, we had probably a 12-foot tidal surge that came through the island. That meant because of the elevation of the island that much of the island was covered by tidal surge. And so two days after the hurricane came through, came out with a refuge manager because a biologist happened to be out of town. So we started going up and down the roads that were passable on the island. And I had my antenna and my earphones, and I was very, very concerned. We were all very, very concerned that we had lost the Red Bulls because there's so much water everywhere and devastation. We really were expecting to hear what we call a mortality signal. That's when you have a solid beep instead of the beep beep. It's just beep like that. So we were going around and I got within about a half a mile of the center of the island and we suddenly heard the signal. I'm 982. I still get upset about it every time I talk about it. I was so happy to hear that signal. 
I just could not believe that she could have had the intelligence and the experience to know where to take those puppies to the highest point on the island. She knew this island obviously very well and she knew just what to do when, when Dennis came through and the water rose. And I think that's, that's probably the lesson is that if it's not a, a, a really authentic experience, they're not gonna have the experience they need when they're released back into the wild. St. Vincent Island, let it be forever a sanctuary. Hey -oh, hey -oh. WFSU, I'm Rob Diaz, the Vegas. Say